Hi everyone, welcome. I'm out here in my yard and I've got a collection of different food items here that have been um, stored in my freezer. Well, mostly the coffee was not stored in my freezer, but everything else was. And you can see there's a variety of different stuff in here. There's a chunk of tomato, there's some pieces of mushroom, there's a banana peel, piece of red cabbage. There's even a mango pit in here. That might take a little while. And the coffee as well as a little piece of extra paper here that can go in as bedding for the uh, worms in the form of the filter itself. And I've already got my glove on because I'm about to dig into my outdoor worm bag because it's been three weeks since I last came in here to check on the system and apply some food. And it seemed like an opportune time. It's a nice spring day and I, uh, I'm out here in my t-shirt. It's a little bit brisk, but it's um, warm enough to be comfortable in a short sleeve t-shirt so um i'm gonna check on how this worm population is doing it does look like we've got a number of little fast moving mites as well as other little insects running around here alongside our worm friend this also looked like it was moving before i thought it was a, a little tiny worm and this worm is scooting quick to get off this piece of wood now that it's been turned over and exposed to the light so let's help that little guy get off the wood and um, retreat to safety so um I think the last time I peeked in here there had been a whole bunch of worms hanging out even on top of this plastic right underneath the wood where a bunch of moisture had collected but none there now so I think it's safe now to, uh, oh, there's one right there on the bottom. Oh, there's a cocoon right there too. It's on the tip of my index finger. Pretty sure it's a cocoon, it looked like one. So like I usually do, I'm just gonna position this cover plastic off on the side, get it out of our way, so we could check in on how things in this bin are coming along. It's not uncommon for me to take a whole bunch of um, old spoiled tomatoes and place them into this bin. And as you can see, all this little greenery here is starting to pop up. And it's all tomatoes from what I can tell, or at least that's my hunch. Every time I stir the stuff around in here too, um, I believe that all the, all the tomato seeds come up and start sprouting. So this is kind of like an everything goes bin. There's all kinds of stuff in here that would probably take quite some time. Peanut shells, things like that. Chunks of sticks and whatnot. For me to have even bought um, frozen food out here is uncommon because I usually don't go through that extra step of freezing the food that goes in here. I just bring out whatever's been laying around. But my, my frozen food supply has been kind of um, stacking up a little bit. I've been uh, encountering issues downstairs in my basement, in my wormery, with some of my systems. I would go down there to feed worms. I would go down there with a, you know, a portion of food similar to what I showed a moment ago with the intention of feeding a couple systems. And then next thing you know, I'm staring down into a bin that's been decimated. So that's kind of like the sad story that's been going on lately with my red wiggler worms and it was just yesterday i believe that i sort of launched a, a rescue effort to try to um save the last of the red wiggler worms that were still alive inside of um a system where the whole population had died off a system that i had estimated to have a good couple thousand worms in it here we have another mango seed, similar to uh, what we're about to add now as fresh food. But this one has been in here for a while, it seems, and it's been um, infiltrated by worms. It seems like they're having a, a field day, ripping their way into this seed. It's always my hunch that the inner piece of the seed is what they like the most. So they've crammed their way into here. I'm just kind of awkward with this one glove setup. Sometimes I wonder if I should just get my other hand <laughs> a little bit dirty. I like to keep my other hand clean so that I can uh, 
use it to manipulate the camera and stuff without it being all dirty. So I'm gonna just keep my clean hand clean and we'll set this fairly large chunk of food to the side. I'm just wondering when that was added. It must have been recently, because it's right here amongst the rest of the, um, the food items. I have to go review the video from last time I fed this bin. Three weeks though. It's been quite a while since I last came in here with fresh food for this system. It's always fun to check in on these worms, but since it's been so long since we last checked in here and given the system fresh food, it does seem unlikely that we're gonna encounter leftovers. And usually it's in the leftovers where the worms are still busy, um, kind of ooh, hanging out together, working down the food. So I think this might actually be a, a little scrap of leftover food from the last feeding kind of an unusual scrap of food looks like the sort of thing that would be easily chewed up quickly and would be gone by now so it is unusual that it's still in here as leftovers I've always um, been curious about how many worms are in here I think I do have sort of a rough estimate based on what everyone thought I was placing in here over the span of a number of different occasions so I would always um, try to get recruit worms out of my compost barrel, show them to the viewing audience, and try to get their input on how many worms they think are present before they're released. And one way or another, I did sort of come up with some sort of a rough figure, but I had, um, I had some people comment on how they thought that that figure was really a, um, a huge underestimation of the number of worms that actually inhabit this system. And it is pretty interesting to see how much of this stuff is already pretty thoroughly worked down, finished compost. I always imagine this system to be pretty, um, pretty stacked as far as having a huge abundant amount of um, bedding material, lots of leaves and stuff. I do recall starting it with a pretty a vast amount of stuff and since it sat out here all winter I imagine that the activity in the bin had slowed down a lot so I didn't expect that a lot of composting activity would have occurred during the winter I kind of figured the worms might have gone dormant I even worried that the worms might have um you know succumbed to the cold and died off but I don't think that was the case it is true that occasionally I took um pity on this container and worried for the population so rather than leaving it out the entire winter I did actually move it indoors on a couple occasions when the weather was supposed to get really really harsh and cold so uh so it didn't really ever go through the toughest cold periods of the winter it was sheltered from the cold by being moved inside but since this is turning into a container that does seem to be mostly castings anymore. It does seem realistic to start thinking about harvesting the material in here soon. I've got a little growing project since it's spring and I want to um, plant a potato plant. And I was thinking that one of these bags would be the ideal um, place to grow the potato plant it's actually two bags one inside of the other and one of the bags I can't recall if it's the inner or the outer one of them has a huge gaping hole that's the reason I doubled it up so I um I was thinking that maybe if I were to commandeer one of the two bags that make this system up I could use it to grow my potato and then maybe at the same time it would allow this um material in this bin to air out a little bit and dry off a little bit because as I work my way down the material is a little bit damp but it does kind of flow readily so I don't worry too much about it right here in this handful you could see two these little two green dots they're the little kind of um maybe the size of a peppercorn those are the cocoons of these worms so it's good to see them breeding in here actively breeding and I usually don't slow down long enough to see the cocoons but if you do, very often you can spot a number of them. 
and I can see one right there. That's the thing, as soon as I do slow down and start um, telling myself that I wanna see them, I see them right away. <laughs> it's just that if I don't, then I can like blow right by a whole bunch of them and never even notice them. So uh, here again, I don't even know how much time I've spent kind of rummaging through here because it's always such a, I don't know why, it's just such an interesting thing. But uh, like I said earlier, the material in this bin does seem to be kind of turning into castings only. And I wondered if it was just down the middle or is it in the edges too? Probably all around. So it probably is time to start thinking about a new home for these worms. And um, you know, if you're a regular on my channel, you'll know that I've been having some problems with die-offs of my red wigglers downstairs. And that's another reason I've kind of turned my attention to the system, thinking that I might be able to round up some worms out of here to try to um, repopulate my wormery with red wigglers, because I pretty much lost the last of my red wiggler bins um, over the past couple weeks. I used to have four pretty heavily populated bins that were red wigglers only. And over the course of time, over the past month or so, I've gradually lost them all. Just some sort of a die out and um, lots of great suggestions coming in from the comments of my videos all the time from people on what what it could be and what, what other things that I could try to try to ward it off prevent it from happening but I don't know it's just um, kind of a mystery to me still in terms of what exactly happened there so to all those people that have provided feedback and input and even condolences about the loss of all my worms I really appreciate all that feedback and all that um, kind words so i just wanted to kind of acknowledge that too i can't seem to help um i don't know i just i'm just kind of overwhelmed at <laughs> how many kind people are out there watching my channels and so sympathetic to my situation um but it's not discouraging me i'm definitely interested in getting red wigglers back down into my um, systems down there and this is, um, is, this is quite possibly one of the best possible um, options for me is to come into here and try to round up some worms. And if I want to do that, I think letting this stuff dry out a little bit so that it would be easier to um, kind of work my way through it and separate worms from the material, it would, to, it would certainly be to my advantage. So I do believe that maybe um, pulling it out of this plastic tub, which is where it was placed to get it up off the ground and protect it from some sort of a predatory creature that was coming in here on a fairly regular basis and um, pretty much wiping out the population in here. So this system here even went through a similar, not a die off, but um, sort of a raid of, um, I don't know, a mole or a shrew or something uh, came in here and pretty much wiped out the entire population. So it had to be repopulated, but, um, I think it's time to grab the food supply that we bought out here for these low guys. And I kind of wish I had bedding, you know. I didn't realize that this system was running so low on bedding because to, to look through here, you would say that, you know, there's some food scraps and whatnot remaining in here, but very little bedding to speak of. So I don't think I'm going to wait three weeks till the next time I come in here. But for now, I'm just going to pretty much plop in this entire portion of food that I bought in here for this um, population. And it's like, a little bit of bedding I guess with this slab of paper and another mango seed and we'll put the old mango seed right there next to it but you saw how many worms are in this system there's quite a few and I don't think that this food is going to last too long so I think between me wanting to grab one of these bags to use it for a different purpose and me wanting to also maybe boost the bedding in here and also allow it to dry i think that this system is going to get a little bit more of my attention going forward so i'm just going to cover up here now because we're pretty much done <laughs> that's really all there was to it just drop that container full of food in here and let them get back to work but i, I did want to take the time to sort of inspect the system a little bit better because i was starting to wonder how far along this stuff in here is as far as being broken down as far as how much um, remaining bedding there is and it does seem like it's starting to run awfully low on bedding 
and I certainly wouldn't want that to be a reason that things turn south in this bin because of the um, lack of sufficient bedding for the worms so all that's left to do here is cover up and uh, and I certainly don't have a lot to do as far as cleaning up when I'm done feeding this system because I just pretty much take this glove off I don't even rinse it I just <laughs> put it back in the garage and I'm done so um, so that's it that's it for uh, checking in on my outdoor worm bag and it does seem like at some point soon we're probably gonna have to start thinking about finding a new home for these worms and who knows some of them might just end up back back downstairs in my wormery i don't know and that might not be correct to say back down in my wormery but down in my wormery so i can get some red wigglers going downstairs again so all right everyone thanks so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated and also consider subscribing to the channel too if you haven't done so already all right everyone thanks for watching have a great day bye now